Here's another bit of an adventure with the lunch beat, which is a one bit groove box machine or something. Um, so this was uh, made up a little while ago. I used alternating blue and white LEDs. I've changed my mind, we're going to red. Uh, red LEDs, and we're going to have an orange one down here for the uh, play stop button. And we're going to leave the uh, power LED as green. Although I am going to downsize it to a uh, three mil LED. These are all fives. As you can see, based on the, this is just all based on the original design. Eagle files, I think they were CAD files, whatever they are. Uh, five mil LEDs fit well, so I'm going to go ahead and right now just get all these out. I'm going to change all these resistors from I think they're 470 ohm uh, right up to 10k uh, which will make them a fair bit dimmer so I can actually see what I'm doing so let's get this uh, let's get this done well it's done what do you think apart from having a battery holder that doesn't fit the uh, markings and missing an on off switch it's pretty much pretty good so let's go in and have a look at what we've got so it's powered by an Atmel chip. And that's about it. So let's give a demonstration of the lunch beat. So as you can see there, we've got a nice big red power LED. The uh, switch is just shorted on the back with the leg of a capacitor. This is my favorite one here. Did you hear it? No? You didn't hear it? It's because I plugged it into the wrong one. That is entirely my bad. So let's have a dance party. Wish I had my camera stand. Whoa! The volume was right down. And I did have it in the right socket. Well, this is heaps good. Nah. The sound is missing. Well, I'll be. It was actually caused by a dodgy audio cable. Incredible. So anyway, here's what it does. last one's press and hold. So it makes noise. Now these uh, trim pots or whatever you want to call them directly above them are fantastic. What you can do is you can actually increase the something and it makes a completely different noise. No it decreases something so it takes ages to turn off. So you might recognize that noise from uh, one of the earlier videos. Well, that one does seem to, to increase the speed. I'm using 10k resistors, 10k, because 
these LEDs are ridiculous. But now, one, one of the most exciting things about the lunch beat is the way you have a built-in sequencer. So we'll go into sequencer mode by pressing the step edit button. And you'll see that the first LED is solid. That indicates step one. If I press it again, step two. And so forth. Now, once it gets back to the beginning, you'll see this one is sort of flickering. That indicates that on the first step, two LEDs for one sound effect, means that this is on. So if we click that again, it's off. And there's nothing playing throughout the whole thing. But let's say the first step we want, uh, say, some bass. And those two will flicker. And you step edit. Turn it on for each step. And that's what you get. This does something, not quite sure what. <laughs> something to do with the speed. Anyway, whoops. So now you can go through and add in, say, a snare. No, let's add the, this noise to every second one. So as you can see, so as we're on this one, first one, so we've got this one and this one coming on. Two, we've just got this guy. Three, we've got this one and this one. Four, we've just got this one. Five, we've got these two. Six, and so forth. And that's how you make music. Or a Geiger counter. You can't just press the buttons while it's playing as well. But it gets quite scary. You have it. That is lunch beat. If we flip it over, this particular one has an anime on it. Can anyone identify that anime? Took a fair bit of effort to get that into the um, silk screen.
Now you're probably wondering why on earth did you make this? Okay, a couple of reasons. One, I got to play with uh, Atmel chips, which I haven't done before. I'm used to, well, relatively used to pick kits. Pick kits, pick chips, um, which are programmed with the pick kit two. Now what I actually did for this is, um, I'm not sure if I've uploaded the other video on this, but uh, we used the pick kit two to program the Atmel chip through these pins up here. Six pins. And that was exciting because I had to learn a whole bunch of different things, uh, including how to compile code for this, and how to actually compile the code of the PIC programmer that I ended up using. Because I didn't use uh, PICKIT2 in the end, I ended up using... Ah, oh, something was... I had to recompile that as well on Mac OS, because I don't use a PC. And the, the funny thing is, uh, there was a, a point there where I was thinking, I can't do this, I can't work this out, I give up, this project is scrapped. I actually got through it, and it worked, and I was like, wow. So I kept going, and this is the end result. Techno Dance Machine. So thanks to the uh, creator of this, uh, Jan or Yarn, if it's a soft Y, uh, from... Uh, Ah, oh, just look in the, in the description, I'll put the link to the thing. Anyway, it's called the Lunch Beat, One Bit Groove Box. I didn't design it, I just put it together. Thank you for watching. Actually, I might as well show you the code itself. So this is the, uh, what I needed to put on the chip. So at the moment it's byte swap, so if you reverse those letters around. You get Sega Mega Drive, Sega Copyright, blah blah blah. Um, dates. Um, the new chip gave me this after. As you can see, those two are now identical.